Hi everyone. Welcome to another pick a card video on my YouTube channel. My name is Julie Ann Fay and I'm a certified angel card reader and a professional astrologer. If you're new here, I do astrology videos as well as card readings and pick a card videos on this channel. I also have a spiritual business in which I do professional readings in astrology and angel card readings. And I also do soul coaching, which is when I combine the two. So I'm glad if you are new to this channel or if you're a repeat person, that's all the better. And in this video, I will be doing a pick a card for messages that you most need to hear for the energy of this next uh, moon cycle. So we've just had a full moon in Pisces which was very tender and emotional and sensitive, but also imaginative and dreamy about the subconscious and opening up to our feelings and what our dreams have to teach us. And we're in Virgo season. So we will be advancing into a new moon in Virgo later on in this month, but we're not there yet. So this pick a card is effectively for the next two weeks during the integration of this full moon in Pisces energy. I also do want to give a shout out to the fact that Mars will be going retrograde and that's happening in about a week's time. And I've written several blog posts on this in really fun ways. There's one called Mars and Aries and the magic of 20 minutes. I have another one that is five crystals you need to know for this Mars retrograde. All of that's on my blog, julieannefay.com forward slash blog. So I love for you to check that out. Give those a read. You can find that in the description of this video. Also, I'd love for you to join my email newsletter list. I send out email newsletters twice a month and they're chock full of just like juicy goodness no spam, I promise. It's really just my way of communicating with people that follow my work to have the latest updates in terms of videos I've done and blogs I've written and any specials I've got going on. It's really the best way to stay up to date as well as of course my socials. So on Facebook and Insta, I'm at, at <laughs> Julie Ann Fay Healing. So with that being said, and I also want to do a shout out to this amazing local business called Three, K Three Cranes Gallery, of whom I bought a number of their stuff recently, and I'm doing shout outs to them on Instagram and also just telling as many people as I can about their work. They have beautiful fair trade uh, clothing as well as they make headbands and they have also crystals and lots of amazing things in their shop. They do have an online website, which I'll put in the description of this video where you can shop online and they do ship worldwide and they make amazing um, hand dyed tie dye dresses and also so much other stuff. I'm wearing one of their pieces now which is this really, really beautiful uh, red spaghetti strap tie dye dress with a bun up. So I'm totally feeling some 90s vibes right now and really loving it. And um, <clears throat> I just wanted to do a shout out to them. If you're looking for more sustainably made, more ethically sourced uh, clothing, it's a wonderful way to upgrade your wardrobe. It's a, you know, for me, it's a process that I do slowly because it is costly, you know, kind of overhauling your wardrobe and organic clothing can be pricey. So um, looking for ways that things are more handmade or ethically sourced, I recommend people do this process slowly in the same way that when you're changing your diet to more vegetarian and vegan, you do that process slowly, you know, so this kind of like more gradual process of upgrading your vibration with more high five things works better when we do it more slowly and gradually. So we don't kind of like freak out and, you know, kind of like shut everything down. So let's talk about the card decks I'm going to use. I have um, the Everyday Tarot deck. This is my mini tarot deck by Biddy Tarot, which is an Australian tarot company. Really cool. I have, I was drawn to use these cards. I haven't worked with them in a while and I don't use them all the time, but the Past Life Oracle cards by DV and Brian, Dr. Brian Weiss. I have Angels and Ancestors by Kyle Gray. He is a wonderful um, oracle card reader, light worker, author, so many things. And he has a lot of Piscean energy. So I've actually been working with these cards in this particular uh, moon cycle lately. We have Queen of the Moon, Queen, I always combine these two words. We have Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. And then as I feel called for bonus messages, I have Dragon Oracle cards by Diana. Cooper, a wonderful uh, UK-based light worker who teaches a lot about the elementals and dragons and archangels. 
And I love her work because I work with the elementals a lot. My business is fairy themed and I do draw a lot of strength from the Celtic mystery schools. I also have in this beautiful hand painted glass that I've made, I also have uh, different astrological bits and bobs is what I'm gonna call this, my astrological bits and bobs jar. Um, if somebody has a better name for this, feel free to put that in the comments. But I'm also going to see about pulling from this for each pile, just to kind of add a little bit of astrology. Sometimes I do use my astro dice, but I think I'm actually going to go with that this time. So with that being said, I'm going to prepare the three piles and I will be right back. All right, I am back. <clears throat> so I'm not going to hold up the little slips of paper because they're going to fall off, but I am going to hold up the three different piles. And again, this is what you most need to know right now for this full moon in Pisces cycle from now until roughly mid-September, mid to late September, effectively the first half of September. So I haven't looked at the cards. I always get to look at them at the same time you guys do, which is fun and exciting. I get to be surprised and amazed like you guys do. Um, so these are the cards for pile number one. These are the cards for pile number one. They're going to look the same, but energetically, they're going to have a different energetic vibration. So you need to use your intuition, tune in. Is this a yes or a no for you? Is this, does this carry messages that you need to pay attention to, okay? So this is pile one. Sometimes also, if this method doesn't work for you, you can even just look at the timestamps and see which number are you called to. Is it one, two, or three? For me, because I'm more of an experienced intuitive, I know like super duper fast which pile. But if you're new to pick a cards or if you're new to kind of test your intuition out, um, you know, it's going to take a little bit of practice, but you will get better and better at it. But this is actually a wonderful way for you to work with your intuition and learn how it speaks to you and gives you guidance, you know. So this is pile number one. <clears throat> This is pile number two. I'm trying not to look, but it's hard. <laughs> pile number two. And pile number three. And you can always pause this video and take a minute to just tune in and reflect if you need a little bit more extra time. This is pile number three. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get into it. I'm gonna take a sip of water. So if you chose pile number one, let's see what you've got. And I do also have three, I. Uh, bits and bobs cards for you guys. So we've got third house. This is again for pile number one. We've got seventh house. And we've got, nope. <laughs> so pile number one peeps, you guys are potentially thinking about someone that maybe you're, you're thinking like, do I wanna be in a relationship with this person? It could be at that level, or it could just be like, is this someone that I'm supposed to spend my time and energy with in some type of way? You do have the no here. So I think that intuitively, you know that there's a lot about it that's just like not right for you, but you are thinking about it a lot because third house is Gemini and this is the mind. Um, this could also just be like you thinking a lot about relationships that you want to be in a relationship and it's like it's a no in your life right now. It's a little bit absent, you know, not having a relationship in your life. So let's see what we have in the cards. Let's see what further messages and guidance we can get from the cards. Um, okay. All right, so from Biddy Tarot, we have 10 of cups, which is a very happy card. We have three of cups and then we have five of cups, okay? So we can interpret this as a past, present, and future spread. This is a three card spread. 
So with this Ten of Cups card in the past, it's showing me that you may have had a lot of happiness and wish fulfillment when it possibly came to relationships in the past. You might have felt like this person in the past was like the one or like the most magical manifestation and like you couldn't imagine being with anybody else, right? But this is in the past. So this is reflecting that that either you're still with that person and the energy is drastically shifted or that person is long gone and you're just sometimes kind of longing for that type of feeling again where it felt so good, you know, being with someone and having that, um, that type of energy experience with someone in a relationship, you know? And you are thinking about this a lot. Um, sorry, I'm fussing with this a little bit here. You're thinking about this a lot because you do have third house energy here. So it's dominating a lot of your thoughts, you know, and some of these thoughts could be kind of negative about relationships with this note card here. You could be like, um, this could also be you saying no to a lot of people because it's like, it's not giving you that same amount of fulfillment that that person provided. And in a way, that's actually a good thing because you've seen how fulfilled and how emotionally happy and content you could feel with someone. So you saying no to these people that don't provide that or like show up with that level of energetic like excitement for you, that's a good thing. So you should pat yourself on the back for that, you know? And you do have three of cups here in the present energy position. So this is a card about friendship and community and networking. So it's actually like right now, and the third house is also about friendship and networking. So in many ways right now, the relationships that you're supposed to be pursuing are actually more so of a friendship and networking basis, you know? This also can carry a message about just the fact that your friends could help you out a lot with this. So when you're getting very stuck in your head, thinking about things with like, oh, I don't know about this or that. And what do I do with this person and all that? Um, talk to your friends a bit, you know, because they know you, they understand your past. They understand the desires you have and the things that you've come out of, and they're less emotionally attached to it than you are. Right. So they can serve as like an objective guide for you with your thought process on it, you know, and also maybe they just have life experience that they could share with you. That would be a value about whatever it is that you're kind of hung up on in your thoughts, you know, and then we do have the five of cups card here in the future position. So this just shows me that, you know, you're just in a phase where you like, you are rejecting a lot of people, you know, it's, um, you're just kind of like, I don't like any of these cups, you know, but the truth is you could always see in this card that there's two cups still standing. So there are people that are supportive and loving to you that you could focus on. And actually in the focusing on of whether it be those specific people or even just the attributes in those people. So Let's say that you like this quality in this one person, although you know you don't want to date them or they're not right kind of fully, there's this one aspect of them or this quality about them that you do like. So you can tell the universe when it when you're manifesting, more please of that, you know, that quality, yes, I want more of that. And maybe with this other person, they're kind of a rejected cup too, right? Um, but there's some quality about them that also is a thumbs up. So you can start to tell the universe, more pleased to this and less pleased to that. Make it fun, almost like a game, you know, when you're manifesting, you're trying to put together different qualities that you want. And sometimes that sifting and sorting can be a little bit painful because you are trying to go through the energy, you're trying to sift through the energies that you don't want in order to get to the energies that you do want and have them kind of all pull together, right? But that is, that process is going to involve you having to be discerning and to reject things that you don't want, you know? And because we are in Virgo season with this full moon in Pisces, it does bring up, especially Pisces can bring up a lot of emotional feels and a lot of guilt around, you know, not being so within oneness with everyone and what virgo i'm a super strong virgo what virgo knows really well is that boundaries are a really good thing you know and discernment is a really good thing discernment saves you from getting so energetically caught up in everything and everyone and in a way where you lose yourself and you don't do your sacred work you know so i think that this people that pick this pile they have some feelings of guilt or possibly even shame that they have options maybe on the table in terms of relationships or this could also be friendships for some of you if you're in a committed relationship and that part of it's not resonating. Maybe it's like friends, you know, for you because there's relationships of all kinds. This can also potentially be about jobs because that is another form of relationships. Maybe you have a, a available options, but they're not really like 
exciting you that much and you're looking for that one that's like really exciting and you know what that feels like because you felt it before you know um, but you guys are just in a phase where you're doing some sifting and sorting and actually I'm really happy for you that you have had this experience because the fact that you've had it once means you can have it again. You know, so if you've manifested at this level of satisfaction, you can definitely do that again. It's just you're in that phase where you are bringing it back into full form and you're probably a more upgraded version of yourself since you were when you manifested that last thing. So you need to give yourself time to kind of go through that process of the sifting and sorting and, and catching up, you know, with this kind of full picture of what you want. And again, I do feel like your friends can be really helpful to you here with this and to just really let go of feelings of like shame or disappointment or disillusionment that, you know, there's nothing for you out there that you're never going to get what you want, that it's like never going to work out for you. Try and let go of those feelings because they don't really get us anywhere. You know, regret is such a like sour emotion. It doesn't advance us in our life. And it's interesting because the other cards we have, they really acknowledge what these tarot cards are saying. So above the five of cups card, we do have the medicine guardian. These cards are not necessarily meant to be read in reverse, but I am going to read this as a reversal. So this card is medicine guardian, be open to healing information, you know, so having this come up in the reverse, this definitely has strong Archangel Raphael kind of vibes to it. Literally, Archangel Raphael does deal with the heart chakra and healing the physical body. And Archangel Raphael, as well as Archangel Raguel, are wonderful archangels to call on for relationship harmony. Archangel Jophiel as well, because she can help us beautify and make our thoughts more positive. But in particular, Archangel Raphael and Archangel Raguel are really good ones for that. I have written a blog post uh, about different archangels and if you're on my that you should definitely be working with um, five archangels you need to be working with right now and why and if you're on my email newsletter list I actually will be giving my email subscribers the chance to download a beautiful PDF of those archangels that was put together as part of me being featured in Spiritual Life magazine. So make sure you're subscribed to my email newsletter list because you'll get the chance to get access to that. And if you're watching this and I've already released that issue, feel free to just email me at julianfay at gmail.com and I can give you a link to that older email newsletter where you can then download it. So Anyway, though, we have reverse medicine guardians. So I also think that part of the reason why you do feel this like meh kind of vibes about these opportunities is because you're doing some heart chakra healing. I think that you are learning, um, you know, it sounds so corny, but it's like you're learning how to open your heart chakra up again. And I think part of it is that you're worried and fearful that, you know, you you can't actually manifest at this you can't manifest the feelings with that person at that level again and the truth is you absolutely can i think that some healing work would really help you out so because this is in the reverse and it is be open to healing information this is like the potential for you to be working with a healers or i'm even feeling multiple different types of healers not at once but just like you pursue something with one healer and then you get idea from that and then maybe you go to another healer or something there, but possibly different healing modalities, I think would actually be really good for you because I do think you're still doing a little bit of energetic cleanup work on some fears and some issues, pain and sadness from the past. And then we do have angels from past life cards, and this is coming up in reverse as well. So this is you feeling um, a little bit disconnected, you know, to your angelic guides and feeling like, hello, where are you? Like, I need help. So we want to get this in the upright position, you know, so take time every day to talk to your angels in verbal prayer. You can also journal to them. You can do automatic writing where you communicate with your angels. I do weekly pick a cards on my Instagram and I swear I'm constantly writing in the descriptions and the card readings that come through, like talk to your angels, you know, they can't intervene unless you say I need help because we are under the law of free will as humans on this planet. So you really, really do have to talk to them and form a relationship with them and invite in their help and listen to the downloads that they have to say, listen to the guidance that comes to you when you wake up or you know, a spontaneous idea that feels really good. Or <clears throat> if you meditate, <clears throat> if you meditate and ideas come through there, listen to those, you know, that is divine guidance coming through for you guys to be paying attention to. Um, 
And in a way, because the angels card does kind of fall above the three of cups card, I do feel like your angels can be a really amazing friend for you through this process of healing and manifestation. It's like they want to be your friends. They want to talk to you. They want to talk to you every day. So invite them in, make that a relationship, you know? And then we do have abundance and fruition here. So I see you guys getting what you want, you know? This also, um, for some of you, I see a lot more of this manifesting in the fall because this has a lot of fall energy card. To me, this card is a lot more about, it's interesting because it does have some summer vibes, but I'm also actually even getting some winter vibes here. So that's almost all the seasons except for spring. But I am getting the sense that for some of you, these manifestations you're wanting, whether they be job, maybe more activity with relationships or love or some type of breakthrough in your healing, I see this really coming to form in the fall. And um, we're just about entering fall in a couple weeks here, you know, so but give it time, like it doesn't have to necessarily be the first day of fall, it could be, you know, as we're stepping into fall, you start to really increase in this energy. And potentially, it would make sense that this is winter because it is the fruition card. So by the time we get to winter, it becomes very crystallized, you know, and it's like you actually like clinch it, you know, and um, we can see in this card that it actually looks quite dark out, which is why I was getting that winter vibe. But there is actually in her mind and in her crown chakra, there's an abundance of energy going on, you know, and it's she is wearing a mask. So I think part of the the energy behind that as well is like you can't see yet the abundance that's on the other side of you come the winter solstice, you know, and come getting into winter and like late December. It's like it's actually veiled or masked to you in some type of way. You actually can't see like how this is all going to come together. And I think that's why you do feel this way a lot. You feel very disillusioned and like, where is it? Where are my manifestations? What's happening here? This could also be contributing to why you do feel this, you know, lack of faith and even healing. So use the advice within this message, go back, because sometimes I channel really, really fast. So go back and re-listen to this message, please, and come back to this message often. You can always come back to this card and pick a different pile as well. But really your guidance is around trusting the process that's, trusting the process that's unfolding within the next season. And, and a half. I'm feeling a season and a half. So going through the next three months of fall and then one, one and a half, maybe up to two months for some of you into winter. I feel like you're going to notice a lot of changes this fall. And then as we go into winter, you're going to start to see some results from those changes. And I think that your friends are going to be really helpful during this process of what you're going through. And your work right now is actually to work on just really communicating with your angels a lot more and inviting in the help of healers to help you out. So of course I do healing work. If you're interested in doing a session with me, I do private readings. I also do astrology readings. And then I also do soul coaching, which is when I connect with people on zoom and I do card readings and astrology. It's like you get everything. Um, but I do have, you know, readings and different offerings at like varying le budget levels. So you can shop on my site, julianfay.com, which is in the description of this video and see uh, if there's something that's calling out to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, so that's what I have for you, pile number one. I really hope you like this video. If you did, I would so very much if you can give this video a like, feel free to comment, let me know how, you know, what you're going through or how it was for you. And, um, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. So much love. All right, pile number two, let's get into your reading. So from uh, my bits and bobs jar, we have ascendant. That's the beginning initiating part of your astrological chart. We have north node, the North Node and Leo symbols look very similar, and sometimes I do get them confused in this jar, but that I'm pretty sure is North Node. And then we have Pisces. So Ascendant, North Node, and Pisces. So this group, you guys might be going through a lot of emotional feels. 
you know, with Pisces on the Ascendant, this could be also being very attracted to spirituality right now or subconscious things, being very drawn to what's in the spiritual realm and what that has to offer. And with the North Node here, this could very much be like destiny, you know, that you're aligning now with a lot more metaphysical stuff and maybe this is kind of new for you. Um, also, so I think for some of you, it's like you're at the beginning of that process. For others of you, this could be that you are a healer, you know, with this type of energy here showing me just that spirituality is part of your identity. It's part of who you are. And people know that they see that they're aware because the ascendant is like, you know, there's no mistaking it. It's kind of the first energy that you put out. So you're definitely a healer, you know, so we have beginning spiritual newbies you know, potentially with this pile, as well as very accomplished healers listening in. So let's see what we've got with the cards here. Okay. So I'm feeling drawn to these two cards first. We have release, and this is coming up in the reverse position. And then we have resilience here. This is kind of like the, I believe it's the 10 of wands, the one where it's like a lot of hard work and a lot of burden. So I think that you guys, because you do have this Pisces, North Node, Ascendant energy, I think that you guys are processing a lot of emotions about your healing work or your purpose to do more things with spirituality and healing. And I think that you might be feeling right now, like the work that you have, there's like, Angel Gabriel, help me communicate this. It's almost like there's so much work to be done in the world in terms of healing and making people be more compassionate, you know, and more loving and more selfless and more thinking about oneness, consciousness. And I think that you do carry that weight and that burden. You feel that sense of almost like, you know, light workers like myself, we carry this tremendous sense of responsibility and it can be very painful for us at times because, you know, earth is kind of a harsh place for light workers, you know, um, and energy sensitives. There's a lot going on. So I think that sometimes you really, you enjoy the fact that you're so sensitive and that you're so cyclically in tune, but sometimes this is also a, a, a bit of a burden for you. And you are aware of that. It's like you carry that energy that, you know, it's heavy sometimes being who you are, just just being who you are, trying to exist in this reality, you know? And then with this release card in reverse, what I think this is, is just that you have a lot that needs to be cleared. There's just a lot of energy here, a lot of emotions that have attached themselves to you. And I don't know that these energy and emotions are necessarily yours. So this is like super empath though, empath like, you know, overdrive, right? It's like, maybe you've actually never done an energy clearing on yourself or you don't have practices where you actually like actively clear your energy, you know, so you have a lot that's like, think about a drain, right, that's kind of starting to get blocked up with gunk. It's like, we need some baking soda and vinegar to go in there and to clean it out so that the fresh energy, the fresh vibes can pass through there more easily. So I do think that you are in need of energy clearing, whether that be with, you know, a healing practitioner. I do do energy clearings. I don't do them with everyone because it's more advanced energy work and it's not for everyone, but I do do energy clearings. And, um, you know, the other aspect of it though, is that, and I tell people this, if I do help them with energy clearings, just because I do a very deep kind of energy clearing scrub for you of your aura and any attachments you have and things like that, that doesn't mean that it's like you're good forevermore. This is actually a daily process, you know, so you can work with pendulums, you can work with crystals, you can work with salt scrubs, um, you can work with Reiki to help move energy and clear energy, getting out into nature, grounding yourself. There's many, many ways for us to move energy in and clear energy. I do actually have a curriculum that I wrote, which is all about uh, beginner to advanced techniques and energy clearing. So if you are looking for a resource, but you're not ready to do a session yet or like a full on energy clearing, I'd highly recommend investing in that energy curriculum um, because it's got a ton of techniques and I walk you through a whole bunch of different techniques that you can do on your own. So you can start to establish your own autonomy, you know, in doing that. And it's important. It's really important work when you're sensitive to be able to scrub your own energy, you know. Um, so I'm drawn here now to the tarot cards. So we have justice. 
King of Wands, and then reverse Two of Pentacles. Okay. So justice in the past position here. This could definitely be in the past position. This could be a Libra energy here. So this could be, you know, we don't have relationship vibes per se from this pile. If you are having a lot of feels about relationships, I recommend you go back to pile number one because that one had some energies there with that. But this does carry Libra energy. So either you yourself are a Libra or you have Libra energy in your chart. No matter what, it's like fairness and balance are important to you. With this card in the past position, it might be like you're feeling like your life is out of balance in the now reality because this is coming up in the past. Maybe you felt like in the past that you had situations where like justice was served literally or you felt like you were more in that you were more in balance not imbalanced but that you were more in a state of balance in your life in the past and you're longing to get that back you know and part of this could be because you're you've really moved into this more spiritual frequency this more um sensitive energy frequency so you're trying to figure out how do i balance the fact that i'm psychic and you know intuitive and that i've got these like these downloads that come through, I've got these sensitivities that come through. How do I balance that with, you know, parts of my old life? Like, how do I figure this out? And then we have King of Wands here. So the way that you figure this out is by really tuning into your divine masculine, you know, this inner strength. So this is like taking the energy of masculine, divine masculine, and this is also combining it with the fire element. So what are you creative about? What are you passionate about? Where can you be kind of a fearless leader? That's where you need to look you know, because that's part of your purpose. I'm also getting the sense that some of this like imbalanced energy and this, because this release card in reverse could also be like feeling very, very stuck about your life purpose. And just like, I I'm actually feeling that in my heart. So just this like, <sighs> like this like heaviness, this tension that like, you know, you're here for big things, but you don't really know what or how to go about it, you know? Um, so this King of Wands here is just saying like, pick something, that you know that you're passionate about and start working and start working the energy of that, you know, um, for example, I'm really passionate about energy and taking care of the environment and protecting animals. Those are things I'm really passionate about. So, and also women's rights. So I get very like fired up, you know, when it comes to these topics about sustainability and being eco-friendly and I'm calling in more things around that in my life. So, when we are shifting into new desires, new wants, or even just rebirthing, you know, desires that we had since childhood, but kind of like reconnecting with them as an adult, you know, it is a process. So, but you do have to start somewhere. You have to start with kind of nudges of what that energy is and then follow those nudges and where they take you. And then in the future here, we have two of pentacles and this is coming up in reverse. So this is, you know, it would be nice if we had this, um, you know, in the upright position, but let's actually pull a clarification card on this. So dragon guides, what do we need to know about this reverse two of pentacles here? And I'm also looking at the cards that I pulled, which are above it. And I do think that they will help and provide some context. Context. We have royal blue and gold dragon. Strengthens you to stand in your power with wisdom. Awaken to your own majesty. Wear your cloak of power with pride. So this is saying that, and in combination of these other cards, which I'm going to speak to here, you know, this is like throat chakra vibes, solar plexus chakra vibes here. It could also be sacral chakra vibes, but this is like you starting to step into that power and that like creative energy, that fiery energy, understand your worthiness and your power. Don't feel like you have to be ashamed for being proud of yourself. You know, like I just posted, you know, some photos on Instagram wearing this like sustainable fair trade dress and like I love it. And then part of me is like, oh, well, should I be doing this? You know, and like, this is the card that's saying, no, like just revel in it, stand in your power, acknowledge your worth and your beauty and what you have to offer in this world and be strong in that, you know, because the King of Wands is like, Psh. you know, I know I'm amazed and he's not going to tolerate um, lowering his standards, you know? And I think that that's kind of the, the take home message here because you have phobias in reverse. 
And then you have stargazer, set your sights higher, set your sights higher. So in combination with this reverse two of pentacles card, this is like eventually you are going to get to a point where you're going to get so frustrated with these stuck feelings and these fears that you have about wanting to break free from maybe like relationships that don't work or just like belief systems that you have that don't work or, you know, routines or habits you have that don't work, you're going to get so frustrated with those fears and the way that they keep you stuck and the way that they hold you back that it's like eventually you're going to be, you're going to realize that I have to move beyond that. I have to break free from that. You know, maybe you're trying to, um, you're trying to manifest jobs or situations or people that just aren't in alignment with you. You know, they either don't respect your sensitivity, so they don't vibe with you on that level now, now that you're evolving more in your spirituality, they don't connect anymore because you're evolving and growing in that. Or there's something about this energy or this connection you're trying to match to that like would put you even more out of balance here. You know, so this reverse to a pentacles with this set your sights higher in the future, I feel like the way that we can really avoid getting into situations where we're so overwhelmed and so overburdened and so trying to juggle all the things is by making sure that we manifest the best of the best, you know? And again, this card awakens your own majesty, wear your cloak of power with pride. So be assertive, you know, this people that pick this pile, you know, you have some really creative energy that wants to be expressed. And I think sometimes you're very focused on, this feeling that you're either very weighed down emotionally, this could even be some depressed vibes here, and that you're just very stuck. This could also be just, you know, again, this kind of depression, the sense of hopelessness that like, when are my burdens going to release? And I do think that sometimes you have fear that like, you're never going to get better. You're never going to get free of this situation and this person. And the advice here is to really look at how can I continue to follow my passions with authority. How can I start to become really clear on what I'm passionate about and then go after it, you know, and how can I, through the throat chakra, through the solar plexus chakra, how can I start to manifest more communication and more confidence in those things I'm passionate about? And in that, you're going to be able to literally like reach for the stars, you know. Um, so you guys that pick this pile, you are juggling a lot of different needs and feelings. I do feel that for you guys. Um, so similar what I said for pile number one, make sure you go back and re-listen to this message. You can also come back to this message anytime and replay it, you know, and um, pick a different pile even if you'd like. But overall, I think you guys are on a good track. It's just that you are processing a lot of feels and there is some work to be done with creativity and, and kind of getting more into that divine masculine energy, you know, and I do, you will get there you will get there to releasing those stuck feels and where you want to go. It's just going to take a little more time. And that's been a message that's been coming through a lot, to be honest, in some of these pick a cards. And I think because we do have Jupiter and Capricorn, which is father time and a very slow moving energy. And that's the planet of Jupiter is the planet of expansion. It's making it difficult for dreams to kind of manifest quickly because we have the expansion planet with the slow, hardworking planet. So it's slowing things down, you know? And then of course we're approaching this Mars retro. So this is just requiring us to have some adversity, to have some strength and to practice patience in wanting to get the things that we want in our life, you know? And again, energy never lasts forever. So as we do move into December, we advance into Jupiter and Aquarius and Saturn and Aquarius. So we leave some Capricorn energy and say bye-bye. Um, so that changes things up. So that's what I have for you, pile number two. I hope this reading was of service to you. I would so very much love if you can give this video a like. Feel free to comment. Let me know how it was for you, whatever you're going through, and how what this reading meant to you. And then subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Much love. Hello, pile number three. Let's get into your card reading. I've just laid out all the cards and I've opened up my bits and bobs and I was chuckling because I couldn't wait to tell you guys, like you guys are hungry. <laughs> so you might be literally hungry as you're watching this, um, but I also get the sense that you guys are just hungry for more things in your life, you know, more growth, more like more things. You're achievers, you're movers, you're shakers here. We've got cardinal which would be Aries, Libra, Capricorn, and Cancer. 
And we've got the second house, which is the house of money, material assets, self-worth, ruled by Taurus. And then we've got Juno here, which is the marriage asteroid and long-term commitment. So you guys are like determined to start getting better commitments in your life, longer term commitments to material wealth and a sense of stability and security. You know, it's like you are ready and wanting to initiate this energy because Cardinal is initiating energy. We have spring, see your seeds grow, and then food and hunger in the reverse position. So I'm not getting full clear messages here. Let's come back to these cards. That doesn't happen very often, <laughs> but we'll come back to those. And so, um, and sometimes that is because I do have to rearrange the cards. They're not meant to be put together in that way. So let me rearrange these intuitively here. Because I would rather rearrange it and give you guys messages that are more true and accurate according to intuition than give you wrong messages, you know. Okay, so I'm drawn now to work with these two together. So we've got, there we go, that feels better. So we've got Queen of Swords and then Hunger in Reverse, okay? So I think that you guys are mentally starting to get really, really sharp and very clear-minded about what it is that you want more of in your life that's coming through with the bits and bobs, right? The second house, you know, Juno here, which is a relationship and marriage asteroid. So this could also be for some of you you're wanting to manifest a very committed relationship, one that makes you feel secure, you know, um, possibly someone who does kind of have, uh, so it can go two ways. It could be either that they have a little bit more financial security, that they're a little bit more established, also in their sense of self-worth, that they have that, they carry that, you know, Torian confidence, or you yourself are actually working towards that more financial stability, security, more self-worth, more confidence as, you know, a secure person so that you can manifest the right committed relationship, you know, and I think that you're getting so clear. It's interesting because I thought this reading was about, I think it's dual layered, which is also I'm being a little bit scattered here. So I think that you guys that pick this pile, it's like you're actually working on manifesting things in love and romance at the same time as career, you know, which is why I'm being pulled in different directions. But I think that with this Queen of Swords card here with the hunger in reverse, it's like you're not going to be distracted. Well, let me rephrase. You are a little bit distracted by things sometimes, but ultimately you're not going to just, um, so with this Archangel Gabriel, help me with, help me with communicating with this pile because I did not have this level of communication frustration pile one and two. So you guys might be even going through communication issues or feeling like you can't communicate clearly your wants or needs or desires. There's something going on here where you guys are having some kind of like fragmented energy because that's the energy I'm being put through reading your cards. But I think ultimately with this Queen of Swords and then the hunger in reverse, it's like you're not going to just kind of pursue like quick fixes to this, you know, like you're not going to, um, you're clear that like you're not here for like one night stands or like people that don't show up with the energy that you want. You want nothing to do with them. And you're really clear on that. You know, so some people might perceive you as cold or even just like, you know, um, biatchy because you're so clear and so assertive speaking your truth about what you do want and what you don't want, you know, and there might be people that do want things from you and they're going to try to, you know, push at you or they're going to try to get those things from you, um, whether it be, you know, you know, things that relate to primal urges, right? So you know, sex or like feed me, love me, you know, this could have so many different meanings. So tune into what it is for you. But I'm feeling this is like a very primal energy. And I think that you guys are actually quite in control <laughs> of like your primal urges here. It's like you actually kind of have them under control because the queen of swords here is very mentally assertive and strong. And she's definitely like very focused on what she wants. And she can be almost like so cutting with her energy. She's not necessarily about, you know, being lovey-dovey and being warm and welcoming. That's kind of the, the Queen of Cups, right? The Queen of Swords is like being assertive, 
being clear. So I think that you're kind of fulfilling that role and you're not giving in to kind of just like temporary desires, lustful desires that might just like not really last for the long term. It's like you're starting to get really, really clear and assertive about what you want and you just like won't tolerate anything less, you know. And I do think that this does have some sort of definitely a relationship bent, but also could be like career and relationship. Career is, like I said, career and relationships. You guys are manifesting both. Um, something here with career as well, because Juno, I do also associate with long-term commitments, right? And sometimes in work and career, we want to have partnerships in our life that foster us for longer-term growth. So I think that you guys are becoming more clear about what looks like a long-term commitment for you in love and also in money. You're getting really clear on this kind of stuff. Because we have will here, this is requiring you to, you know, this is literally the card about willpower. Um, you could see here that she's got this mask on, you know, and there is like this light that she's shining over her face, but she's got the mask on, so it's like she's not fully receiving it. We do have the moon here in the background, and then we have the moon phases. So. I think that sometimes you guys are not always perfectly Queen of Swords-ish with your urges. I think that sometimes you do go through phases where you're like, oh, well, maybe, you know, you almost like try and like fit that person or that job into the thing that you want. But then it's like, you almost maybe do that. But then it's like, as the moon changes sign or as like the energy changes sign, it completely changes your tune and you're able to look at it differently. So. For this pile, you guys need to also watch just like impulsivity and maybe give it like a moon transit, right? So the moon changes signs every two and a half days. So if you're feeling some type of way about like, yes, this person, this job, this thing, I want to get involved with this, you know, maybe give it like another day or two just to let the moon change sign and then assess it. Because I do feel it feel here that you guys are very moony. It's like you're very ruled by the moon. So you might have urges or temptations that come through, but it could just be a moon transit that we're under. And once we get to the new moon, then not then, well, that might be a message for you. Once we get to the new moon, which will be in Virgo closer to the end of this month, you know, maybe you guys can look back on it and be like, oh yeah, I don't know why I actually thought about trying to be into that. Like now I see that this is way better, you know, but either way, whether it is a full new moon cycle, which is two weeks, I think even just a moon transit itself would be a benefit, which is two, two and a half days. So, you know, give it another day or two. I track the moon all the time. There's apps that you can download where you can check the position of the moon. You can also go on astro.com and that will always tell you it's like a little description box over to the right down below. Um, that will always tell you with a position of the moon as well. So if you check it and it's in, you know, if you don't have to know a lot of astrology to just track the moon. So just understanding like, okay, it's shifted signs. That's going to create changes in your chart. I do actually have what I call a customized moon planner, which if you're interested in working with the moon more closely, which for you guys might be really important. That's an offering where I actually custom write as an astrologer based on your natal chart, each moon sign and the dominant energies you have when the moon is transiting in that sign. So it's really, really helpful. I also do one called a personal sign planner, which is the same concept, but done for the different sun signs, the different zodiac seasons. So if you're interested in that, would highly recommend. And it's a reference document, basically. You can go back to it and refer to it when you're like, I don't know what's going on. And you can look up and see, oh, the moon's in areas. Oh, I have this house and this is the energies there, you know. So we have here spring, see your seeds grow. And I also want to say that I'm starting to feel like some of that fragmented energy is passing through. So I think that you guys might have also energy that comes in where it's like a sense of urgency of like, oh my gosh, I have to figure this out right now. And there is this like impatience energy, this rushing energy a bit with people that pick this pile. So I think also a message for you guys is that Whew, you guys got a lot of people that like just want things from you too. If there's someone that's trying to rush you, you know, to do something with them, there is somebody that needs to hear this, okay? If there's somebody that wants to rush you to do something with them or to do work for them in some type of way or to just be a part of their life in some type of way and they're trying to rush you into it, okay? You need to be strong and have willpower here that you have every right every right, okay, 
to take your time with this decision. You don't have to make this decision on their timetable. You're making it on yours based on when it's energetically appropriate for you. Okay. So yeah. Then we have spring, see your seeds grow, and then we have king of pentacles. So I feel like the assertiveness work that you're doing in the here and the now, um, I think that you see the payoff from this by the time we get to the spring. And I'm recording this for you at the end of summer in 2020. So this potentially can be spring of 2021. If you're watching this and you're in the Southern hemisphere, you know, I know that for you guys, it's different because we're coming out of your winter. So that actually would be much sooner for you guys, right? Um, <clears throat> but I think that because you do have King of Pentacles, and that is the card about like real security and stability. I see you guys like by the spring, it's like you really do achieve this level of like much more stability and security. Doesn't mean that you don't have good stuff happening in the fall and that you're not starting to really become on that path. I think you are on that path through the fall and the winter. It's just that by the time you get to the spring, it's like you actually start to see so much of the rewards from the phase you went through where you guys didn't cave in to like temporary situations or lustful desires. You were clear of mind and thought. This could also even be impulse buying guys for you too. This is just like primal urges of all forms, right? So sometimes we have urges where it's like, oh, I want to buy this or I want to do this thing because this feels so good. And especially with this Mars retrograde in Aries, it's, you know, going to bring up situations where we're going to be like unbalanced with our energy about action because it's Mars. So we might be like overdoing th things or underdoing things. There will be times in which you're supposed to be taking action, but you're not. <laughs> and then there will be times in which like you impulsively take action and, you know, you might learn something from that impulsive action that happened there. Um, but I think that you guys are learning how to temper these urges with the Queen of Swords here with the mind. And although it's, it's tough work, it's tough work to be assertive. And, you know, um, it's tough work to be like an assertive woman. If you're a man watching this or however you identify, it's tough work to be this mentally assertive, you know, and um, you guys are doing it though. You're learning how to do that. And I think you're, you're successful in doing it. It's just sometimes you're like, little bit frustrated because you maybe want some of that cups energy to come in there. And I think that you will start to really see the rewards from that assertiveness you were putting out for many months by the time we get to, you know, future seasons. Um, last two cards we have here. So we have Ace of Pentacles and then Food and Hunger in Reverse. So I think that for part of you, there might be this fear because this past life cards do also resonate strongly with like fears. Sometimes there might be a fear here that you're going to go hungry, literally that you're not going to have the resources you need to feed yourself or to supply like the basic resources that you need. And with this Ace of Pentacles card here, you have to really understand that there are opportunities coming in. You know, if this for you was heavily resonating about love and relationships, that is a form of abundance. So there's something here, you know, an ace is one. So there's like one thing coming through here. Uh, if it's money and career, and like I said, I think you guys are manifesting both. Um, there's an opportunity coming in here. So really, as these fears come up, you know, that you're going to be like not having the means to, to take care of yourself and take care of others. You really just need to keep affirming. Affirmations could be really good for you guys. Keep affirming and believing like my divine perfect work is here with me now. You know, I'm aligning with high, high vibrational people, places, and things that are of service to me and I'm mutually of service to them. So really starting to just like you know, there's a little bit also of catching up with belief work here for you guys too, because I do think that there's a lot of fears here about going hungry or becoming a bag lady or, you know, being very poverty stricken. And that could be also related to past lives, you know, strongly. Um, so let's see if I want to pull, let's pull one more card for you guys, pile three. So let's do this from the Dragon Oracle cards here. Uh, like I said, lots of energy going on with this pile. You guys are manifesting more. You're manifesting in more than one life area. So I think that's why we're getting pulled in different directions because, you know, it makes sense too with the second house cardinal. It's like, you're driven. You are so driven. Like, hello, I want this. I need this, you know. 
Magenta Dragon enables you to bring forward your soul wisdom, awaken your soul memories, and higher spiritual understanding. Prepare for accelerated ascension. <laughs> so, yes, you guys are moving forward. This is a red hot energy too here, you know, so this is root chakra. So I really do see you guys getting a lot more financially secure, you know, or potentially relationship secure, whatever type of security it is you're craving in your life, or maybe both. I see you guys achieving that level of security. And I think that you're going to start manifesting this quite quicker. Different aspects of your life are going to start clicking into, into place quicker than you realize. You're going to be like, whoa, I didn't realize that because I did this work over here where I was assertive and I was clear about my boundaries and I focused on manifesting, you know, the new opportunities. So we did this work over here where we were like clear about our boundaries, assertive, not giving way to like tempting energy or temptations to, you know, could be also about giving up. Um, but I also think that it's, there's, there are people and things that are pulling at your energy. And um, I think that you're, you're getting like really assertive of like, no, it's a no, or like, you know, being really assertive. And instead you're choosing to focus on manifestation and manifesting what you want those opportunities you know overcoming those fears and it's going to accelerate quite quickly here you know <clears throat> um let's pull one more bits and bobs cards for you guys yes <laughs> literally yes <laughs> so that is perfect to end this reading on, you know, I was literally saying like, it's going to start accelerating quickly for you guys, but I think I'm just getting the sense that this is hard for you guys to perceive of right now. And what I'm also, um, Archangel Gabriel, help me communicate this. So they're showing me actually like a ribbon, right? And you know how, um, with a ribbon, like I know that sometimes they'll tie them on trees. I know that's a Celtic tradition in, I forget what the tree is, but they'll do that with trees. There's a famous tree in Glastonbury that they do it to, and I can't remember what it's called right now, but basically the angels are showing me a ribbon and how it's like there's one ribbon and it's one color, and then we tie and we knot the next ribbon, and then from that one we tie and we knot the next. So I feel like this ribbon string, if you will, is because you can't perceive of you over here how this is all going to come together, but it is. And part of it is because there's going to be the first ribbon that clicks into place. And then it's like somehow from that first ribbon, the next one comes in and it knots itself to the previous one. So it's like a layer upon a layer. And then before you know it, you'll look back many months from now and be like, whoa, I've actually got this really beautiful thread now going on in my life of like this chunk of my life and this chunk of my life and this chunk of my life. And it's actually quite put together well. But I think that from where you're standing right now, it's a little bit like scary because you can't see that, you know, but your job is actually to really, really focus on for sure boundaries and assertiveness with these primal urges here, um, the impulsivity, you know, and watching for people that are trying to pull away your energy or tempt you in some type of way off of the path that you're trying to work or manifest. But also your job is to really focus on just manifesting the first piece of the ribbon. So, you know, kind of going back to the energy I had at the beginning where it's really scattered. It's going to be challenging if you try to manifest two life areas at the same time. So focus on one at a time. It doesn't mean that you have to give up on the other one. You know, maybe you rotate them in and out. Maybe you have a vision board that's for one and you have a vision board that's for other and you focus on one for a bit. Then you're like, okay, I'm kind of wanting to change it up. And then you come over here. But if you try to hold both in your consciousness at the same time, I think it's going to be really overwhelming for you and you're going to have trouble communicating with the universe being clear of mind, like I was having trouble with that, um, you know, on how to make, how to make it work and to say what you want to say. So really try to focus on one ribbon piece at a time. Okay. So I understand that I'm doing this because this feels really good. This feels like this is on the path of my highest manifestation. I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to focus on how good this feels and I'm going to keep affirming my boundaries. I'm going to keep focusing on what feels good and being assertive with what could take me off my path. And then 
before you know it, you're going to get the new piece of ribbon and you're going to attach that new piece of ribbon to the old one and it's going to continue it and so on and so forth. So I'm excited for you, Pile 3. And I can resonate with a lot of these messages and um, I am sending you so much love. So I would love it if you can give this video a like. Feel free to comment down below what this reading meant for you. I always love hearing that. It keeps me going. And um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. So sending you all so much love, Pile 3. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up there. I just want to do an extra shout out. Make sure that you're um, following me on Facebook and Insta at Julie Ann Fay Healing. And also, please, please subscribe to my email newsletter because then you, there you can get all the updates about my latest blog posts, my latest videos, all the things. So sending you guys so much love and light and I look forward to chatting with you on social. <laughs>